Yeah. And let's talk about genetics. I know there's the APOE4, uh, which is right. that subtype is associated with a higher risk for developing Alzheimer's. Where do the different, I mean, APOE is, I think, the the, the main gene that's looked at. Obviously, there's probably several others, um, but how does that play into these different uh, Alzheimer's types or these different yeah, mechanisms? That's a, that's a really good question. And, and so you have to divide, basically divide uh, Alzheimer's up into two pieces. There is just a tiny fraction, it's less than 5%, that is truly full-on genetic, and it's just three genes, APP, presenilin 1, presenilin 2, also called PS1, PS2. Those are the ones where everybody who has the gene gets the disease. Now, we're actually working with a few people who have those, and we're very hopeful that what we've done for the rest of the people, the sporadic side, which has worked very well, will work for these as well yeah. if you simply start earlier. But it's going to take us time to know that. But for 95-plus percent of us, it is a sporadic illness where the genetics will increase your risk or decrease your risk, but they aren't it doesn't have a 100% penetrance. So in this case, um, as you mentioned, APOE is the most common genetic risk factor, and it's specifically the E4, the epsilon 4 allele of APOE, which gives you increased risk. So if you have no copies of APOE4, which is about three quarters of us, for example, I check myself, I'm an APOE33, which is the most common. That's what your I am as well. Life, yeah, and your lifetime risk is about nine percent now of course if you do the right things you can drop that much lower if you have a single copy and that is 75 million americans most of whom don't know it your risk is now 30 percent for your lifetime so everybody should get this checked out and get on active prevention because this increased risk you can drop it down to very very low by doing the right things get yourself a cognoscopy everyone knows to get a colonoscopy when you turn 50 please get a cognoscopy if you're over 40 and see where you stand so that you can make sure you do well for many years to come and then finally if you have two copies and that's 7 million americans again vast majority don't know it you're over 50%, somewhere in the 70 to 90% category. So most likely you will develop Alzheimer's unless you get on active prevention. So we deal with a lot of people who are 4-4s who know they're at risk. Um, and so, but again, this is not a fate. This is just a risk factor. And there are about 30 other genes that are at risk. And there have been dozens more of that identified recently as well. So there are you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of genes that have some risk. But by far, the most common one is APOE4. Yeah, and some of the characteristics of Alzheimer's, we see the neurofibrillary tangles uh, right. in, the, in the neurons. We also see the amyloid plaque that's kind of built up in the brain. And what is it about an APOE4? What, you know, there, I, 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 obviously you and I both, both are into functional medicine. So we look at a lot of these genes and we think, okay, this provided some level of survival advantage. There must've been some advantage that our ancestors had when they had this, right? And so what is it about an APOE4 that predisposes them more to, to have a higher rate of Alzheimer's? And is there any benefit to having um, that particular allele? Yeah, there actually there is some benefit, especially if you live in a third world country. But, you know, just to step back for one moment, this is a really important point, because if you look at this the old fashioned way, which is unfortunately what's going on in places around the country, they go in and they say, well, something happened, your protein misfolded, we don't know why it is. It made some tau be phosphorylated. We don't know why it is. You've got an aggregated proteins. We can remove it with an antibody, and that actually doesn't make you better. Um, we're just confused. What, what, what the heck is this all about? It, because they're not looking at this physiologically. If you look at this through the lens of precision medicine and go back to basic mechanisms, your brain is not trying to kill you. Your brain is trying to help you. So what's happened is you get exposed to these various insults you have poor oral microbiome. And by the way, P. gingivalis and others from the oral microbiome are found in the brains of patients wow. with Alzheimer's. So as I mentioned earlier, A-beta, the amyloid beta peptide, is part of the innate immune system, which now makes perfect sense. You start with insults. You've got inflammation. You've got these various pathogens. They get into your brain. Herpes simplex gets into your brain, as we know. Various spirochetes get into your brain. 
various tick-borne illnesses, these things, it's surprising how the access is much more than was ever realized before. Now, your brain responds and says, I'm being attacked. You start with an inflammatory response, which includes amyloid. And as professors Robert Moyer and Rudy Tanzi from Harvard showed a number of years ago, this is an antimicrobial peptide. So you're going now and you're covering this stuff and killing it with the amyloid. So you start seeing these plaques. It's not because the amyloid's there to hurt you. It's actually trying to help you. Now, the thing is, it is a very much like what happened to our country with the pandemic. We were all told in early 2020, you know, you, you're going to socially distance, you're going to shelter in place, don't go to your job, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, we went into a recession. This is just what your brain does. It puts down the amyloid and says, we got to pull back. We, we have got to go from a mode of growth and maintenance to a mode of protection and downsizing. And so, in fact, the phospho tau, you mentioned the, the, uh, the, the uh, tangles earlier. And the reason you have those tangles is because the amyloid now, as it's saying, okay, pull back, pull back, we're gonna, we're gonna now, essentially it is a scorched earth retreat. We're gonna kill all this stuff and we're gonna have to live with a slightly smaller brain. It signals the APP, which is the parent of the amyloid, signals to tau to say phosphorylate. And what phospho, what does when you phosphorylate tau is, Tau is a stabilizer for microtubules. The phosphorylation pulls it off the microtubules and allows them to collapse rapidly. So you're now signaling to your brain, pull back on those neurites, which is exactly what you see. So you lose synapses. Now, what we found is that everybody who has cognitive decline associated with Alzheimer's disease is on the synaptoclastic side instead of the synaptoblastic side by analogy with osteoporosis. So all we are doing is identifying all the insults. We're getting rid of the synaptoclastic signaling. We're enhancing the synaptoblastic signaling and people start getting better again. And as people have seen, they continue to get better and better. Yeah, so and that's so important because, yeah. you know, really when we look at the health of the brain, healthy yeah. synapses may be more important than the overall, I guess you could say volume of neurons. The amount of healthy synapses or little gaps between the neurons really provides um, strength and a, kind of a, a form of cognitive uh, reserve, right? You know, ability to adapt to stress, you yeah. know, and 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 function well, even as we even as we get older. And no question, there have been a number of studies showing that people with high cognitive reserve are more res resistant to getting Alzheimer's yeah. disease. So, you, you know, there is a threshold there. And as long as you can keep things going, and this is the reason for, for all of us to continue to exercise, continue to get evaluated and make sure we don't have these various insults that are causing us to lose these synapses. And again, there is just so much that can be done. This, this old idea that there's nothing that prevents, reverses, or delays Alzheimer's is turned out to be so wrong. There is a tremendous amount. The armamentarium is actually huge, both for prevention and for reversal. The longer you wait, the tougher it is. 